friends, my name is Miss Cheryl and I am from the Coldwater Library of Branch District Library and today I want to talk about a Japanese holiday called Tanabata and it's kind of a happy sad story um, but Japanese treat it as a very happy joyful festival time and here to help me talk about it is my friend Hiroko and Hiroko-san はい。はい。はい。えっと、その。え、七夕とは、えっと、7月7日に祝う日本のお祭りです。美しい旗織りの姫、織姫と若い牛飼いの彦星のお話です。And so she said, Tanabata is a Japanese festival to be celebrated on the 7th of July. It is a story about a beautiful weaver princess, Orihime, that is also known as a star in the Milky Way called Vega, and a young cow herder, who, uh, Hikoboshi, and he is known as a star called Altar. The two of them fell in love and they were married. But after marrying Orihime and Hikoboshi, all they did was to play and not work all day long. And neither of them worked. The gods became angry and separated Orihime and Hikoboshi apart on both sides of the Milky Way, which is also known as the Amano Gawa River. The gods, though, allowed Orihime and Hikoboshi to meet once a year on the 7th of July. その日に願い事をした人々の願いがきっと叶うと言われているお話です。It is said that if they can meet safely then, all the wishes made by people will certainly come true。え、小さい頃子供の頃には近くの公園や遊園、あ、幼稚園に浴衣を着て集まり、短冊という折り紙に切ったような紙に願い事を and at a, the young age, kids put on yukata and gather at nearby parks or kindergartens and they decorate the branches of sasatake, bamboo, by hanging origami on them. Paper cut out called tanzo, tanzaku with written wishes. 私の通っていた幼稚園では、その飾られた竹笹の周りで盆踊りをしたり、みんなで吸い替わりをしたりしてお祭りをしました。and the event of Tanabata Matsuri or festival is held at many different places throughout Japan and the towns and cities are dressed up with large and elegant decorations. Vendors will set out many stands at night where you can buy food and crowds of people will fill the city and have fun celebrating with enjoyment. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I wanted to talk to you about pronunciation. That's one of the easiest things about the Japanese language. Um, if you can learn five sounds, you are on your way to being able to pronounce over 50% of Japanese. So, in English, we have a E I O U. And if you feel your mouth, you, you know, we don't we have kind of a wide mouth and the breath is coming out. 
Now for Japanese, you want to keep your mouth small and keep the sounds short and sharp. And it's going to come more from the back of your throat. One more time, if you can lightly put your fingers on your throat and let's say A, E, I, O, U. Now Japanese is going to be short and sharp, small mouth, and we're going to practice a couple times. Put your fingers on your throat lightly and say A, E, U, E, O. One more time. A, E, U, E, O. So today we're going to practice some hiragana. Japanese has three writing systems, but hiragana is the one that most people learn first. And when you write it, two important points are you want to go left to right, up to down. And usually the up to down is going to come first. And it's almost more like writing cursive. You want to let your hand flow. So the word we're going to practice today is called ne ga i. And one tricky thing about Japanese, when you pronounce the ga or g hard g sound, you almost have to talk like you have a really bad cold. It's very nasal. Or you can plug your nose. If you say ga and then plug your nose and say ga, <laughs> that's how they, they pronounce it. In this word, ne ga i, means a request slash wish. Now, Tanabata, we're talking about wishes, but it's more like a special, special wish request. It's more, more intense, like, oh, I, I, you know, there's some, oh, I wish we have something for good, good for lunch, or I really, really request, wish that my mom and dad would buy me a new puppy or a new computer or something a little bit bigger, a little bit more intense. So we're going to start with the ne. We're going to go up to down. And it's kind of like a Z on a slant. You're going to go left to right, around, and make a hoop. Then you're going to, for the gut, we're going to do kind of a slanted line, kind of a curved line, and then two little lines right there. And then for the E, it looks like our parentheses, but you need to put them on a tilt. So you're going to go like this and like this. So let's do it one more time. And we're going to go straight down, like a C, around, and a hoop. So, ne, ga. Don't forget the little ton ton, they call them in Japanese. And then, e. And that means wish. And then I wanted to give you a little bit more about the story of Tanabata, uh, kind of adding on to what Hiroko said. So there was a young lady who was this fabulous, fabulous weaver of cloth. And she was so good. And her father was maybe a little bit greedy because he made a lot of money off this beautiful cloth she, she wove. And she was so sad and got depressed. Finally, the father took pity on her and said, okay, I will introduce you to this young man who happened to be the cow herder, who also did a super great job. He was very hardworking. He took care of those cows perfectly. Well, once they met and got married, they were so in love with each other all they could do was focus on each other and they forgot about their work. He let the cows go wild. She just didn't weave anymore, wasn't making any money. And so 
the gods and the father got really angry and they said, you know what? We're gonna separate you two. And so they put them on either side of the Milky Way. <gasps> thousands, thousands, millions of miles apart. But again, the lady, the weaver became so sad. It's sad, it's sad, it's sad. And some versions of the story say, the father took pity on her and asked the gods, can you please let them meet a little bit? And then some versions say the gods took pity on her and allowed them to meet, but only once a year. And that's why this is celebrated um, because it's kind of a happy, I think I told you at the beginning, it's kind of a happy, sad, happy story. But when they get to meet, everybody is happy. And they put their wishes on the trees. And if it rains, they can't meet. If it doesn't rain, they can meet. So Japanese always hope for good weather during this holiday season. Um, so next, I wanted to talk to you about a picture that I have. And this is a very, very famous picture. It was done in 1858. And this is all like a wood block print. It wasn't painted. They would carve out the wood stick it in a die and press it on the paper. But this shows how even back long ago, people would hang wishes and decorations on these bamboo stalks. And now these were not trees growing in their yard, but they were stalks or sticks of bamboo that vendors would go up and down the street saying, bamboo for sale, bamboo for sale. And then every house would buy a stick, kind of like we do our Christmas trees. And then they would put them in the ground and decorate them however they wanted. Um, this has got like watermelon, uh, ribbons. It does have some wishes on it. And however they want it, they would put them throughout the city in their yards. And thank you. Thank you for listening. And we will have uh, packets available for 40 people who would like to sign up and request them. They'll contain Japanese snacks, uh, calligraphy worksheets, origami worksheets, and chopsticks. And they'll be available at Kids Place, but for curbside pickup only. And the headbands, too. <laughs> and headbands, too. Can't forget about these. And they'll be available for curbside pickup at, again, the Coldwater Branch.